There is an old saying that 50% of people will believe anything you tell them. 25% will half agree, while the remaining 25% will be unsure. Sometimes it's not what you're saying, how you're saying it, or even what you're selling. It's how you present what you're selling that really matters. I used to work for a national retailer. Everything behind the scenes was ancient, from the computers to the fixings. In the store itself, everything was beautiful, high-tech and modern. They even had 30 high-quality mannequins worth over $1,000 each, proudly standing around the store. Ultimately, they knew how to impress their customers. They knew that they could wow their customers into believing the product was better than it really was. You may be thinking, well, this isn't exactly new, is it? And you're right, it's not. But next time you're out shopping at an independent store or reading through the adverts in the newspaper, you will see how many companies and salespeople forget that visual selling is clever selling. Why work twice as hard into creating a good impression with a sales pitch when you could have already impressed the customer before even interacting with them? You need to think about how you're displaying your products currently. If you own a retail store, are the products looking fantastic on the shelves? If you're a salesman, or own an e-commerce website, are your photos of the highest quality you can afford and achieve? Image means everything in business, and there are thousands of ways you can make your store or product look more appealing to potential customers. The next time you scan the sweet or cereal aisle at your local supermarket, notice what products are at eye level and what products are not. You may notice the expensive brands are at eye level, while the bargain products are usually towards the bottom. The theory is, if a customer is interested in bargains, they will have to look for them among the more expensive goods on offer. This tactic is cleverly playing on the human characteristic of being lazy. People are lazy, and you can use this to your advantage. For example, there's three bottles of wine. Wine A is $49, wine B is $29 and wine C is $12. The average customer will opt for wine B because it's the safest option out of the three. Wine A is too expensive for an average consumer. Wine C is cheap, meaning it probably won't taste as nice, so wine B is ultimately the winner. However, wine C may cost $4 wholesale, so as a retailer or seller you have an $8 profit margin, whereby wine B's wholesale cost is $10, but you have a $19 profit margin. This means for every bottle of wine B you sell, you would have to sell two bottles of wine C. So why make life harder for yourself? There's also another trick you need to be aware of. Some retailers place items of higher value amongst mid-range items to make them appear more attractive than they actually are. It's definitely worth some time experimenting how this could work for you. Equally, it's important to remember that the higher value item will most likely entice customers in. So fully utilise any brand awareness of major companies to maximise any potential sales. Have you ever noticed one thing about shopping? It doesn't matter if you're clothes shopping, food shopping or gadget shopping. They equally try and make you do the same thing. They make you visualise yourself with the product. They visually sell to you. Think about it. When you're shopping at the local clothes shop, what do you see? 99 times out of 100, you will see fantastic, visually appealing posters. Displays of people having fun. 
people creating memories, and ultimately, people enjoying their lives. What's that telling you? It's saying if you buy these products, you can also experience that same enjoyment as well. The retailers and sales professionals are basically selling stories. They're storytelling. They're selling lifestyles. They're changing your perception of reality. Next time you're in town, look for the clues and displays placed around the stores, telling you how much fun you will have if you purchase the product. It can be highlighted that this form of selling through stories leads to additional purchases that the customer may not have originally planned to make before entering the store. This method of visual selling works as well on websites and promotional literature such as brochures and magazines. In theory, it's like popular shows on television, particularly singing and talent competitions. Have you ever noticed how one participant has the Cinderella backstory? Usually from a broken home, a bad childhood or just plain unlucky. Naturally, the audience wants them to succeed because they have made a connection. In some cases, an unbreakable bond, so they always progress quite far in the competition. It's exactly the same principles with visual selling, whether that's in-store, face-to-face or online. If you can get a customer to visualise themselves using your product or service, the tills will certainly start to ring. Visual selling actually starts on the street outside of the store. The pages linking to your e-commerce site or the literature potential clients may see. Generally, creative and interesting displays that will catch the attention of people will ultimately draw them in. Obviously, depending on your industry and target market, this can depend on a case-by-case -case basis. The mistake a lot of people make is they cram too much information into one space. Arguably, the most successful companies and salespeople create moods and themes that latch onto their customers' lifestyles and raises their curiosity. You want to create displays, literature and banners that make customers want to purchase from you. You need to make your customer imagine themselves using your product or service. If you're selling furniture, for example, group products together. Make a room setting to display a sofa, table and chairs. If the styles you have selected are on trend and appeal to your target market, you can actually sell a lot more items than by highlighting the products individually. Sometimes shoppers visit a store, website or arrange a meeting and they ultimately tire kick. They take a look around and leave buying nothing, wasting their time and yours. However, it can be said that it isn't the products which are at fault, it's usually something that has put them off. The experience a customer receives is vitally important. A potential customer needs to feel comfortable and respected. A high quality website, store or sales pitch can really seal a deal to making mega money. So make your impact. In the modern era, people don't have time to look over everything you sell. Shoppers are busy people, that's a fact. So make their lives a little easier. Organise your products in a logical manner. Group them by colour, item type or size. Make sure it's easy for your customer to buy from you. Don't be your worst enemy. For many years, there's been studies conducted how consumers react to colours when purchasing a product or a service. I've also conducted my own research on this theory 
and generally there's a strong correlation between the responses of emotions and colours in which they have been shown. It can be a great idea to think about what image and message you're attempting to convey. As humans, we have been conditioned to understand that certain colours relate to certain events. For example, red can mean danger, such as fire, traffic lights and so on. Equally, green can be interpreted as a safe colour, for example, a green traffic light, or related to nature, such as an apple or tree. Generally, these signify growth, strength or good health. It's quite easy to recognise how certain colours trigger psychological responses within our brain. Many people forget that image is arguably one of the most important elements when selling a product or service. I have encountered a lot of people who make fantastic items, yet their presentation is simply poor. A customer ultimately has zero faith in the product because they're not impressed at first glance, i.e. their snap judgment. Even though in an ideal world this shouldn't matter, a consumer will generally make a split decision because there's always another brand, product or salesperson who's waiting to take over and close a sale. In reality, if a customer hits the look of an item, they simply won't give it an opportunity to impress them with its attributes. That's unfortunately the way of the modern world. People have short attention spans and increasingly are becoming more and more impatient. Think about how your product or service can wow your customer from the very moment they set their eyes on it. Typically, there's four psychological primary colours, red, blue, green and yellow. Think of the sky, think of the sea, think of the fields, think of the flowers. These colours are interlocked in our mind, soul, body and emotions. To understand the psychology effects of colour, we need to explore their properties in more detail. Red is generally a bold, exciting and physical colour. It can conjure positive connotations of energy, survival, strength and courage. It can highlight negative connotations of aggression, defiance, danger or power. It leaps out and grabs our attention, even though it's not the most visible of colours. Our eyes are immediately drawn to it. Some will argue this is our inbuilt sense of danger or fear. Others will note that it's our survival instincts kicking in. There's no definitive scientific proof for either theory. Yellow is a warm and emotional colour. It has positive properties such as optimism, friendliness and confidence. However, it can also create negative connotations such as anxiety and depression. Generally, yellow is regarded as the strongest colour from a psychological standpoint. Blue is often regarded as the colour of intelligence, trust and strength. It has positive connotations of logic, calm and solidarity, and negative connotations of coldness and unemotional. Typically, blue is used by technology companies. A deep shade of blue highlights a notion of clear, concise thinking, whereby softer blues will give an air of calm and concentration. Green can symbolise growth, health and balance. It also has positive connotations of love, reassurance, environment and peace. Its negative connotations are blandness and stagnation. Green is generally the more striking colour after red. Even though red pops out and grabs our attention, green remains constant no matter what angle it's viewed from. Typically, green signifies hope, little danger and a reassured nature that everything will be okay. For some, this can relate to our history at primitive level, 
feeling at one with nature, which is built in to our human DNA. White generally conjures positive connotations of purity, cleanness and simplicity. It can raise negative connotations of coldness, barriers or unfriendliness. Visually, white is utilised to give a perception of space. Think of white rooms in an art gallery. It can also communicate a notion of something being new or fresh. Black is generally the opposite of white. Its positive connotations are sophistication and security, whereby its negative connotations are oppression and heaviness. Black in general lacks personality. It's not energetic or spontaneous. It has a classic and safe appeal. It's a colour which won't date and will typically give a timeless image to a product or brand. Grey is a psychologically neutral colour. It has negative connotations of depression, lack of energy and lack of confidence. Grey has an absence of colour which for some can be debilitating and leave a dramatic, questionable effect on an end user. Orange typically conjures positive images of comfort, food, friendliness and fun. It has negative connotations of frustration and immaturity. As orange is made from a mixture of red and yellow, unsurprisingly, it can be a sub-meaning of these two colours. For example, frustration may be a direct result of the colour red, and friendliness may be a direct result of the colour yellow. It's worth noting that too much orange can suggest a notion for the lack of knowledge or intellectual elements. Purple is generally regarded as a creative colour. It has positive connotations of luxury, quality, authenticity and awareness. Its negative connotations can be inferiority and suppression. Purple can also relate to time and space and can encourage deep meanings. As you can see from the explanations, there's lots of arguments and theories as to why a certain colour is greater than the other. Generally, if you're going to implement colours in your products, services or branding, it's a good idea to base your selection on the emotional response from your target audience rather than basing it on the colours individual properties themselves. It's worth mentioning that it's not the colours alone which attracts a customer to your company or product. It's the feeling, mood or emotions that is created which persuades them to look more closely. Generally there's no study to prove that choosing one colour over another will make people's purchasing habits increase or decrease. It's typically more about the image you wish to portray. For example, if you had a clean, simple product, you would most likely choose the colour white. If you had an exciting product, you would most likely choose the colour red and so on. As each industry and sector is different, there may be differences between how the consumer reacts to colours in individual circumstances. What works for one company or sales professional may not work for another and vice versa. Equally, you should also consider how genders perceive colour differently. From the research I conducted, I found that generally when viewing colours related to a product or service, a male's favourite colour is blue, whereby a female's favourite colour is purple. I also found that apart from blue, which is accepted as a trustworthy colour, men prefer brighter colours to women's softer tones. This evidence can be reinforced by men's love of the colour red with its bold and powerful connotations. Whereby, women prefer softer colours such as green as this enforces growth, health and reassurance. The best strategy 
is to experiment with market research to develop a clear and concise plan of action. Some colours, depending on your sector, will gain more favour over others. Conduct an extensive number of tests to determine which colour is received more favourably over a period of time. Remember to spread out your research and don't conduct tests closely together. Equally, choose an array of different people within your target audience for the best and most conclusive results.